Finally, we have all the safety and security features embedded inside the STM32 L4. So for safety, on the memory side, we have ECC, so we've got the error correcting uh, bits at the end of the memory arrays. We've got parity checking for the SRAM, and we've got read and write protect available for the memory block. GPIO pins, we can lock the configuration of the pins uh, into certain settings, which then can't be changed if the application gets corrupted until you've gone through a reset. On the power supply side of things, we've got the programmable voltage detector, which can monitor the power rails and signal and interrupt when the power rail drops below a certain threshold that you decide using the auction bytes. And we have brownout reset, so that we can put the device into a safe reset state uh, if the power does go down. CSS is the clock security system. So this monitors the clock's tree if you're using external crystals. And if that external crystal for some reason fails, the system will trigger an interrupt and switch over to one of the internal clock sources so that you can keep running and shut the system down or continue in like a limp mode, depending on what you're trying to do. For the connectivity peripherals, we have CRC checking available. For the analog peripherals, we, as I said, Earlier on the analog slide, we have the analog watchdogs available. For the control peripherals, we have a brake input. So if you're doing anything with motor control, we have an asynchronous brake input to the timer to actually shut down the motor control uh, driving uh, complementary transistors that are connected to the device. DMA, we have some error detection on the DMA. And inside the core itself, we've got the dedicated watchdogs to manage the uh, software. And we have the memory protection unit to make sure we can't jump to areas of the address space that we're not allowed to execute code from. Security. Uh, again, inside the memory, we've got a dedicated firewall. So where we can enter and not enter the... Um, certain areas that we're not allowed to if we're running dedicated peripheries and dedicated software libraries. We have the PC ROP, which is the readout protection. Uh, this provides us with the ability to protect the IP that's stored inside the memory. If we have a device that contains these peripherals, we have AES security and the random number generator, so we can do the hash and uh, DARES, triple DARES uh, protection inside the device. For the control area, we have the free tamper pins that are built into the RTC, so we can again try and protect somebody opening the unit to get inside to do various things. The debug port has the um, protection on it as well, so we can block the uh, access through the debug port by setting the various bits in the option bytes. And again, the core can use the memory protection unit that's available inside to make sure that we can't do things that we're not supposed to do at core level. And finally, even though we are running at 80 megahertz, we can be an ultra low power device. And you will now see all the peripherals that have some form of low power functionality. So the memory can be switched on and off, all the GPIOs, uh, because of the technology we're using, are low leakage. Uh, you can wake the device up from multiple GPIOs that are available. Power-wise, which we'll show in the next section, we can drop the device into various low power modes, which include the voltage scaling. You've seen all the various clock sources we can use and how much the consumption that they have available to them. Connectivity, so some of the connectivity peripherals can wake us up, so we can be in various low power modes like stop, and we can still wake up on the reception of a UART uh, packet. Uh, so there's various connectivity peripherals can bring the device out of wake up. The clock security system, as we saw earlier, can uh, switch to a safe um, clock source so that we can do various things. AES can run in low power modes as well. The analog functions, as you saw earlier, can be down in the nanoamp, so you can run them all into low power modes. 
and the analog functions can wake the device up, or certain analog functions can wake the device up. The DMA can do backs, batch access mode, so we can do various things in large chunks and keep the device in sleep mode a lot longer. We can even run the debug cell in low power modes, so that when you're doing your development and that, you don't break the debug chain back to the PC so that you can manage what's going on in the system. And finally, the core and the memory, they can be switched on and off depending on which of the low power modes that you've entered. So again, all abilities to save power in a design if you really need to. So the STM32 L4 series is a very complex device. It contains high performance features, 80 megahertz operation uh, available to you. There's multiple peripherals. You've seen all the various periphery that we've got embedded inside this device. All the safety and security features are all integrated inside this device. And you've just seen on that last slide that all of these peripherals can either wake the device from low and power modes or can function in some way, shape or form in a very low power mode.